Tell us about your journey into the into the first team. Take us way back. There was a Netflix documentary which didn't paint you in the greatest light, or can't have enjoyed that greatly. And then Brighton Come Calling in 2018. What what sort of headspace were you in at that time? Not a very good one. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I've never watched that. My family have, but um, yeah, I was yeah not in a good place, as you can imagine. You know, you you go to a team that's local to you. You have a lot of friends and family that support the club and yeah, things didn't didn't work out, you know. Um, I didn't play an awful lot and when I did, didn't do myself any favours really, didn't play at the level I know I can play at for various reasons and um, yeah, the opportunity to come here came about and it was one that was um, yeah exciting for me, I think, a chance to find myself again on and off the pitch, um, reconnect with my family again. Although obviously at the other end of the country, I think it was important to be able to give time back to them, you know, because the previous year I hadn't, I hadn't done that. I wasn't myself and it was important to, to try and find myself again. So when you arrived, there was Matt Ryan was sort of number one. Were you coming in as a number two looking to step out of the spotlight or were you coming with a mind to play? You can push him and push to him be, out the team. To be honest with you, I think I was coming with a mindset of getting myself back on track by hook or by, by crook. You know, it was a case of, um, like I said, first and foremost, I had to become a good, a good husband, a good father again, because I hadn't been that for a year. I had been locked away in a room, not, not being myself and I had to make sure I got myself back to that um, and that's way more important than football, way more important than football. So that was my first priority, get confidence to be myself again and I think this place allowed, allowed me to do that. Did moving to the seaside a complete change, did that, did that help your mindset then as well? Yeah, definitely and I think for, um, f for a little while at first my family didn't move down with me which again some people might question that, but I think it was brilliant in terms of letting me focus on myself for a little bit again, come out of the doldrums, as you can say, and, and then when I, when I went back home, it was family time, and that was the most important thing to me, and that, that was really big. So a couple of years on, I think, was it November 2020, Robert Sanchez got his debut. How do you react to that when you're the number two and then suddenly Rob leapfrogs you? Was that a difficult moment? Yeah, I think so. I think I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. But the manager at the time had his reasons, you know, he, he believed in Rob. And yeah, at times you're thinking, well, oh, does he not believe in me? You know, you can question yourself a little bit like that. But again, bumping the road, isn't it? It's, it's part of life. It's a, it's a journey. And you've got to trust the process, I think. I think um, that was one thing I made sure I was consistent, consistent with my behaviours on and off the pitch, consistent with how I acted, and eventually good things can happen to you. Yeah, take us to the last six, seven, eight weeks. When, when did you first get an inkling that a run of Premier League games could be coming? I had the feeling Every time I, the boss had played me in the cup, I'd come off the pitch and felt like I had played well. And it was a process, it was just sticking to the same thing every day, following the manager, what he asks and what he demands. It was, yeah, can you do that to the best of your ability? And I tried, tried my hardest day in, day out to do that. Um, I'm a guy that I'll always put the team and other people before himself. I think that's a massive thing for um, a group who we're trying to succeed. Not just me, by the way, That's we have a lot of people in there that do that. And I think sometimes the little things like that can help you. Coming from where I've come from, I have ultimate confidence in my own ability and I've been at the bottom and I know what that feels like. So I'm not scared of that. I know I can handle it. I can know I can deal with it and bounce back from that. So that doesn't scare me. So it's something that I'm, um, yeah, I'm proud of bouncing back from from the bottom. Tough. If you can't look back and and be proud of where you've come from, then well, who else is going to do it for you? Bowen has picked his way through. Bowen is in. Still with the stop. 
how happy were you coming through that? How did it feel at the final whistle, having been involved and having a clean sheet? Yeah, you, you can't replicate that feeling of winning a football match. Probably the the only thing that's better is when you, your wife or partner gives birth, you know, and um, yeah, it's an amazing feeling. There's a lot of emotion. My parents came down, my family were here, so it was, it was quite emotional for, for them. And obviously the scenes at the Amex at the end of, at the, end of the game when we win is, is very special. Were you always hungry yeah. for first team football? Yeah, I was hungry to play, definitely. I think, barring the first year, which it was just a case of getting myself back to the level. After that, I knew I was capable. It was just a case of believing in myself again and having somebody that believes in you. I had opportunities. I, I won't lie, I did have opportunities, but for one reason or another, I, I ended up staying. What has this manager said to you to get you into this position, first of all? what, what? To follow him. You've got a group of guys in there that are following him and would do anything for him and think that says it all about him. Really, he's got charisma, passion, the list would be endless, but if you can't follow him and trust in him, then you're probably in the wrong place. Still looks long and it could, oh it's going to reach Matoma, all the way through Matoma! What a finish that is from Kaoru Matoma! Magical! Have you always been good with the ball at your feet? Is that something that's developed in the last couple of years? No, I think I've always been quite good. Um, I was obviously a goalkeeper in the academy at Middlesbrough when I was 11, but they encouraged us to, well, me to still play outfield. So I played for my local district and, and county outfield. Yeah, any good up front? No, I was in midfield, <laughs> centre mid. Engine room? No, I wasn't, I wasn't a good runner, to be fair. <laughs> But again, looking back in your career, I think you have periods where you're probably not as confident and you, you're not in the right structure or yeah, team structure to, to show that. And um, yeah, I think the last few years I've been able to do that. How, how about going forward now? You know, now you've seemingly got the, the shirt has that changed your outlook at all? Have you got, you know, even more hunger and desire to hang on to it? Yeah, uh, just every game as it comes, really. I think um, I'm in a good, good moment uh, on the pitch, off the pitch. I have a manager who fully trusts me. Um, so if you step on a pitch and your manager fully trusts you, then you've got nothing to lose, trust me. And um, the back in that, you have is, is, is special, so I think I'm in a good moment. Keep controlling what I can control. That's, again, the process, daily processes, and what will be will be on, on game day. And how happy are the family to see you at the end of training every day? Yeah, they're, they're, to have them here with me is uh, very special, yeah. And, you know, they've been to the games and to have my boys there watching is, yeah, it's, it's amazing.